Hey, welcome to Gear With Getting. Today, I wanna to share with you something that's, that's kind of basic when putting together a pedal board, but if you're not aware of this, um, you could end up ruining some of those uh, pedals that you spent your hard-earned money to buy. So in this video, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna share with you one principle to use, I'm gonna share with you an example, and then two tips on how to make sure that you are able to implement uh, this principle when it comes to putting pedals together. So today, before we start getting into gear, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel. Uh, your support means a lot to me. And so um, let's, let's help to grow this channel and in turn help to get content out there that is honest, down to earth, practical for everyday guitar players. So subscribe. And if you like the video, make sure you, you give it a thumbs up. So what is it that could destroy your effects pedals. A few years ago, a friend of mine came to me with this problem. He had a, uh, this particular guitar pedal that had just stopped working. Now, it, it wasn't a cheap pedal, and it was actually a pretty nice uh, guitar pedal by a reputable uh, pedal company. After taking a, a quick look at his, uh, at his, at his setup, I, I saw the problem. He had just started um, using several guitar pedals together, and he was doing what we call daisy chaining, right? He was daisy chaining pedals together. This is when you have a, a nine volt power adapter and uh, something like, uh, like this, right? And then you get a, a daisy chain cable. And so it'll, it'll, take it from, it'll take it from this kind of connection. There's a single one. And, and most of the daisy chain cables out there go to like five, you know, five pedals. So, um, and what he thought was all he had to worry about was making sure that it was a nine volt adapter going to nine volt pedals. And he was giving no thought whatsoever to how much amperage this power supply, this power adapter was serving up to those pedals. And so he had this pedal that quit working. And why did it quit working? Because it was starving for more amps until that circuit uh, stopped working, until that circuit burnt itself out. Now I realize, you know, as guitar players, there's all kinds of people that are guitar players. Some of us are um, geeks, right? And we love to understand the equipment, how it works, why it works the way it does. But then there are guitar players who just really aren't, aren't uh, made that way. They're, they don't think about um, you know, the basic principles of electric, electronic equipment. What I wanna do today is I wanna kinda of help with, uh, help you to understand how this works. And so most of the time there is, you buy a guitar pedal, most of the time there's documentation along with it. Um, if you don't have the documentation, Look, the, look up the pedal on the internet. Look, try to find the manual for that pedal on the internet. And so here's an example from the manual for the TC Electronics Hall of Fame 2. So right there in the um, specification section, it says power input, and it tells us that that pedal needs 100 milliamps. So here's something for you to know. Uh, one amp equals a thousand milliamps. One amp is a thousand milliamps. So here's a scenario. Let's say you are daisy chaining together some pedals and I'm using a, a, a nine volt power adapter. This power adapter says that its output at nine volts is 0.5 amps. That's 500, okay, milliamps. And so I wanna power some pedals with this power adapter. And let's say I have a, um, a Flamma modulation pedal. That pedal takes 150 milliamps. I have an Electro Harmonics Canyon Delay. That takes 150 milliamps. Let's say I have a TC Electronics Hall of Fame reverb, that one I mentioned earlier, that takes 100 milliamps. And then I wanna send those pedals into something like a Moore Day Tripper, which is uh, a pedal that, 
makes everything sound like it's going through a Vox AC amplifier. Well, the Moore Day Tripper takes 300 milliamps. So I'm using this adapter. And if you do the addition with all of those pedals, what do I need? I need 700 milliamps. I need 0.7 amps to power those pedals. This power adapter is only 500 milliamps. I don't have enough amperage. And so what's gonna happen is those pedals are gonna try to draw that, that, uh, that amperage and the circuits are gonna starve. And you know, if they work at all, you know, probably what's gonna happen is at least one of those pedals is eventually gonna stop working. Now here is the principle. The principle is you can run more amps than needed into pedals and everything's gonna be fine if you do that because these pedals are only going to use the amount of amperage they need. So it's good to have more amperage, not less amperage because if you don't have enough amperage running into the pedals, it will damage them. And so this is a big deal, especially in scenarios where you are daisy chaining pedals together. So here's how you keep this from happening. Tip number one is if you're gonna daisy chain pedals together, you need to make sure, you need to look at these power adapters and make sure that you have enough amperage running into your pedal. So you gotta do that, you gotta do the math. You gotta add, add up the amperage, right? And so if this, ch this channel is about gear worth getting. One piece of gear, if you're gonna do the daisy chaining, that's worth getting is that True Tone One Spot nine volt adapter. Now I started out with that uh, when I was when I was doing that when I was daisy chaining pedals together I've moved on to the one spot pro CS7 which is what I have um, powering my pedal board but even then you got to do some daisy chaining at times you got to make sure you're you're paying attention to amperage so that one spot nine volt power adapter gives you 1.7 amps that's 1,700 milliamps. Now, if you don't want to, if you don't want to buy one of those, all you got to do is find a power adapter then that has enough amperage. And so here's one I have laying. I was laying close to my desk, and it's, it's a good example of um, the one. This one only has 0.5 amps, but here is a nine volt power adapter, and let me show it to you. It says right there, if you can see it, it's it's one amp. So that's a thousand milliamps. So when you start adding together what pedals you're powering with it, you can go up to a thousand milliamps or one amp. So that's the first tip. Be aware of how many, how many amps you're running into your pedals. Second tip, keep track of what each pedal needs. I do two things when I get a new uh, effects pedal is what I'll do is I will write the amperage of each pedal uh, with a Sharpie on the front of, of the pedal. So this is one of those uh, TC Electronic Spark pedals. And what I've done is I've written it, this is 40 milliamps. That's what this, um, this pedal takes. Here is a uh, MXR Classic 108 Fuzz pedal. This pedal only takes 2.5 milliamps. And this is something that you'll notice is when you get very simple circuits, um, they don't take a lot of, of milliamps. They don't take a lot of, of power. When you get into uh, things like digital pedals or digital delay pedals, that's when you start really seeing the amperage requirements uh, go up on those pedals. So that's what I do is I just write on the end of them with a Sharpie how many milliamps uh, each pedal needs. And sometimes you'll have pedals that are considerate for you, right? So they will actually print right on the pedal what the requirements are. Like I had mentioned before, the Moore Day Tripper, right? it makes sure um, it, it gives an AC, Vox AC character to your, your signal. And so one of the things that they did is right there on the end, they printed, this is a nine volt pedal and it takes 300 milliamps. So that's the first thing that I do is I write on the end of the pedals. If they don't tell me already, I write on the end of the pedal how many milliamps it takes. 
And then kind of to build in some uh, redundancy, what I do is I have a notepad, uh, the notepad app on my iPhone. I put every pedal that I own in there and then right next to the name of the pedal, I will put the amperage of each pedal. Why do I do that? Why do I need the redundancy? Just in case, you know, this rubs off. And, um, you know, I, I switch things sometimes on and off of my pedal board. And it is just a pain, like, to um, start putting a new pedal on and then go, oh, I got to look up. I got to find the manual uh, and look up how many, how many amps this or milliamps this pedal needs. So those are two ways um, that I'm always conscious of what the power requirements for that 9-volt pedal are. Hey, I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you know someone that you think would benefit from this information, uh, tell them about this video. Uh, you know, I encouraged you earlier to subscribe to the channel, to like the video. Also, share the video with somebody that you think might, uh, might benefit from this information. Hey, thanks for watching Gear Worth Getting. <laughs>